Hello and welcome to the show. I am here in Forza 6 with my first of the silly car builds. My vehicle, well, it was a fairly obvious choice, let's face it. The Ford Country Squire. I was really happy to see that uh, this car was going to be in, uh, in Forza 6. Admittedly, you know, I know it's not perhaps the most exciting car and some people may say, well, why on earth did they pick this particular vehicle to go in a, in a game about racing? However, I love the fact that on Forza you can take vehicles like this and make them absolutely crazy. I love taking unexpected silly cars and and turning them into some some really rather crazy contraptions. Of course, before I set about turning the Ford into an absolute monster, we must give it a target time. So, I'm going to be taking a proper race car, the Ferrari 512 LM, and we're going to be driving this around via the Rio Mountain Circuit. We're going to have eight laps with this Ferrari to set a benchmark time that the Ford Country Boat is going to have to try and beat. It's going to be a tough, t a tough, a tough challenge, certainly, for the, uh, the Ford as well. This, well, it's a proper race car. It is a relatively decent handling, surprisingly easy to drive car as well. The circuit is a mean one, and I've picked it for that specific reason. It is a short layout of the uh, the, the Rio location, if you like. It's only ju it's just fractionally over a mile long, and it's a quick track. So lap times will be, well, into the, perhaps even into the 40 seconds. Uh, around here, it's, uh, yeah, a very, very quick lap, but that doesn't make it any less challenging. It is bumpy as anything, and that is going to make a, uh, a real nuisance for the silly car builds, and that is well part of the reason why I picked it. Uh, they've got to be very, very careful uh, around a number of sections. It starts off relatively open, it really tightens up through this latter section as we climb back up the mountain. We've got some understeer going on there as we uh, try to feed the power in, and then there's this final corner. It is a, oh, it's one of these corners where if I get the line spot on, you can be flat out. If I don't get the line spot on, and I try to be flat out, I will smack the wall. So you really got to be super, super precise with the car. You can see the Ferrari is bouncing and bouncing around over the bumps. Now, for the sake of this, uh, I'm saying that we must stay outside the uh, white line uh, around there. I'm not quite sure, actually, where it counts as dirtying the lap or not, but uh, for this, I'm staying outside the other white line with the cars. I can also never decide, do I want first gear or do I want second gear? Climb... <laughs> Climbing through this uh, this section, and the Ferrari, on the most part, is, as I said, it's a pretty easy, pretty straightforward race car to drive. In all honesty, it's 500 horsepower rear-wheel drive, but uh, you can be pretty damn aggressive with this car. I mean, I'm whoop, uh, once I've got out of this corner here, uh, once we've got it sort of got round it, I will boot it. I'll be absolutely flat out, no problems down here. Even when the car's bumping around across across the corners. It's, it's no real fear for the uh, for the Ferrari again out of here. Admittedly, I'm running a little bit wide. If I keep it nailed completely, we will probably go for a spin because the, the track kind of falls away from you on the outside. So we don't want to be uh, don't want to be doing that. And then we just wait, just the wait, wait, wait. Don't go on the power a little too soon. It's uh, <laughs> it feels like a never-ending corner that one. It's another bump. And I, I had to have a lift because I don't think I was positioned quite. I probably could have actually got through that flat out that time around. I was I thought I was slightly out of position. It actually wasn't quite as bad as I was. Uh, I was expecting, and then we get slowed down into turn one again. It's a lovely flowing circuit, this one. Uh, maybe, I don't think it does, certainly doesn't replace Iberia, it's one of my favourite tracks, but it kind of gets a, a, a similar feel with the kind of interesting elevation changes and uh, a, relatively, a relatively fast flowing circuit, although, of course, much narrower. Uh, <laughs> around here. It's, um, yeah, I do like it though. I do like it. It's an interesting track. I think I may have slowed down too much. Ooh, big slide from the, uh, <laughs> from the Ferrari. I say a big slide from this. For a race car, yes. For what we're about to turn the country boat into, I suspect that'll be a lot more difficult to uh, keep that under control in, in trying to use the power around this circuit. We're on lap five already. We're down to a 41.3. I would quite like to get under the 41s if I can. No bumps. Whee. <laughs> Oh, the back end, we've got chucked about so much across there. And get stopped and turned, and now we're on the power a little too soon. This is what happens when you start when you start just slightly falling behind the, the lap time that you want. You start pushing it just that little bit harder, trying to get on that throttle a little bit sooner. And uh, that's when you start getting issues. Okay, we've got away with it coming up the hill. 
Oh, no, the back end's going again. Come on, Ferrari, stay on the road. Uh, it was better through that final turn. Oh, that actually was a monster through the final turn. 40.7, I will take it from the... Uh, oh, I've turned in too soon. Ah, oh, I cracked a, wind, uh, a window, sorry. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> that was only a little bit... Oh, I got distracted looking at that wind, uh, the, the window, and I bumped the wall on the outside. Uh, in the turn one here, it's actually quite a nasty turn one because it goes in and it's a very tight corner and then it opens up and I keep getting... Uh, oh, I missed that turn, I turned in far too soon. I keep getting uh, it was sort of confused, I keep thinking that it's going to be a really tight hairpin but you can carry a lot more speed than you expect as it opens up as you go around and there's got this final corner. Uh, the final turn, that was actually pretty good. I was going to say run, run close to the wall on the inside but it is such a narrow, a narrow circuit. This is why I love, I love street circuits. I love the challenge of street circuits. Uh, there is just no, no margin for error here. If you get the back end slightly out of shape, the chances are you're going to be flinged at a wall. The corner we're coming up to, this is where you have the most margin for error. It's the widest point on the track down here. Uh, there is quite a lot of sort of area on the inside of the uh, of the course, but uh, that's kind of not where you're going to have a trouble, really. It's unlikely to have a trouble sort of firing you that direction. So, yeah, I mean, up here, there's not a lot of space for things to uh, to go wrong, and especially coming towards the, uh, the final turn. No, this is not this is not a good lap either. Uh, through here, I had a little lift on the way in. Yeah, I had to have a lift because we started to <laughs> go off towards visiting the wall. It's never a good thing when your car is off wandering towards the wall. Oh, get it slow down for turn one. But yeah, I mean, for, for what it is, for being a, a, a full-on proper 500 horsepower Ferrari race car, this is pretty damn good to drive around a very, very bumpy street circuit. You really can push the car a lot around here without it doing anything too unpredictable. And uh, we're actually on for a quick lap if we can uh, if we can keep it. Oh, a bit of understeer through there. No, no, stop, stop, stop the sliding, the little sliding. Uh, it started sliding once, and then I wanted to get on the power sooner because I was losing time, and that's when it all went wrong. Uh, we had to have a lift on the way in because we're getting some understeer through there this time. And I don't think we're going to go quicker. We are not, but it was another uh, <laughs> another lap into the 40 seconds. Okay then. Well, the uh, the Ferrari. With uh, oh, we've only we've only done. To be fair, we've only scratched. <laughs> there are no scratches on it, but we've cracked one window. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I I do love this car as well. I love the fact that the, the back the engine is just sort of so open to, to everything. The kind of the great big the great big glass at the back, and then the see through kind of rear bumper ish. Well, it's not even a rear bumper. It's kind of yeah, the exhaust car. It's a fantastic car. This thing. I really really like this car, and uh, we have. Our target time was it a forty a forty point seven that uh, we are going to try now and uh, go faster than with the Ford Country Squire. I'm not sure it's going to be quite as controlled as this. And this is the monster that is going to be challenging the Ferrari. Well, it's not quite a monster yet, as it is still a, a completely standard Ford Country Squire. But uh, by the time we are finished with it, it should be uh, really rather... Well, it should be really rather crazy, at least. And so, yes, let us begin with the building of the car. Now, the first thing we're going to be dealing with... not going to do drivetrain swaps. It would be easy to make the car four-wheel drive be a little bit boring though so we're going to be keeping the country square as a rear-wheel drive what we are going to change is the engine well the standard engine is all very well and good it's okay but it's not uh, it's not exactly massively powerful uh, not compared to some of the things that we can put in the car now we could put in a seven liter uh, hemi v8 which is again a, a decent enough engine but we do have the option for this a 5.9 litre V8 racing, and I believe this is a NASCAR engine, or essentially a NASCAR engine. 825 horsepower. To begin with, 650 foot-pounds of torque. It's going to make an awful, awful lot more power than the, uh, the Ferrari, so we will be sticking that in the Ford. We will then go and take the restrictors off. Uh, oopsie, don't want to go quick upgrade. We will take the uh, restrictors off and we will make it to 994 horsepower, almost 800 foot-pounds of torque. We are essentially double the power that we had in the Ferrari. Twice the horsepower of a Ferrari race car in a Ford estate car. The uh, the issue though is going to be control. We're going to have to actually try and keep this bloody thing uh, on the road. So we will be wanting all of the handling parts. We will be wanting a beard at the front for some uh, for some front downforce, and we will be wanting. Have we got silly wings? Uh, oh, we can't keep the roof rack and have a spoiler. Jesus, that puts the PI up by a hell of a lot. 
That's a massive... I mean, to be fair, giving the car some rear downforce would be quite important when you have this much power going to the rear wheels. But uh, I'm kind of, it's kind of slightly disappointing we can't have the roof rack and a spoiler. You know, just for, just for that extra sportiness. It's important. Roof racks add sportiness, okay? Uh, <laughs> and it's just a fact from uh, from fair race races. Um, the bonnet, I'm assuming... Uh, we do have the option. I never really liked this uh, this hood scoop. It, is slightly, it looks slightly different from the ones that I've seen in previous Forzas. It looks kind of... It looks like slightly lower profile, perhaps even slightly wider. Um, I still don't particularly like that style though so we'll go with this one here Sa saving some weight basically which is why we will uh, be having that tires are of course going to be a very important thing uh, in or uh, for this car uh, we've got we have drag tires which we will will not be drag tires can have their uses they will make a car understeer an awful lot but they give you stupid amounts of grip um, or at least they have done in previous don't quite know uh, about on here uh, race tires of course is what we're going to be wanting if we're going to have any hope of keeping up with the or getting just anywhere near the Ferrari full stop uh, tire widths what have we got I'm hoping it starts off with piddly tyres, 195s on uh, on this, but I'm hoping we'll get some decent ones. We are going to get 325s on the back of the Ford. That's pretty good. Uh, there are there are bigger tyres slightly available, but that's not too shabby whatsoever, so we will take that. And front tyres, we are going to... Hmm. Okay, I was expecting sort of 265, 275s on the front. They're quite small. They are really quite small. 235s on the front. Uh, my slight concern is that we might actually now have understeer more than oversteer, which is a weird thing. I, I will, I will admit that is a weird thing to say when talking about a nine, well, a thousand horsepower, near enough rear-wheel drive a state car. But I think understeer could actually be a big issue with uh, with this car, um, or certainly turn in understeer could be uh, could be a big problem. I'll just go through all of the handling parts here. We will make the car as light as we possibly can. Differential in the older, certainly in the older cars, differential very important. Otherwise, you just have the car spinning one wheel uh, I'm not quite sure if the country squire would do it or not but yeah it, we're going to want it and now to the other very important handling parts brakes yes we're going to want these um, we're going to want these quite a lot as it's a rather heavy car that's going to be going really quite quickly and then we want to try and somehow get it slowed down for some of the corners that, uh, that the mountain course is going to, uh, to throw at us course race suspension as well give us some uh, some better handling one thing i have noticed is that uh, things like the suspension add quite a lot more pi than they used to um there is quite a big jump normally it would in previous games it only had a couple of pi whereas now it actually has a, a pretty big effect on the pi of the vehicles add on some roll bars as well and we'll definitely be wanting a roll cage on this thing um Right, we're already just getting up into uh, into S class. With a weight reduction, we will probably put it uh, to uh, it's about halfway through S class. So we are down on PI on the Ferrari. Uh, of course, we are up on power and up on torque by a fair bit. Um, but control, control is going to be the uh, the big thing with uh, with this car. We're going to have to try and keep the damn thing on the road. If we go in here, can we? Um, yes, we can indeed. We can still look at the benchmark. So it reckons 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. That is assuming that you can actually, you know, kind of put the power down onto the road. Uh, not to 106. Top speed, 190 miles an hour. And see, I was, I was expecting it to be 200 plus, but perhaps the gear ratios are slightly wonky. Let's face it, we're not going to be worrying about gear ratios at the track that we're on. Um, it's, it, it's not going to be, that top speed is not going to be a problem because the straights are very, very short. Right, the uh, the monster is really just pulling up to the uh, to the start line, and uh, fingers crossed, I will not bin it in a wall immediately. That is my uh, <laughs> my main concern is that uh, <laughs> I will just stuff it in the wall straight away. But let's uh, let's hope not. Okay, off the line we get much of the wheel spin, and through turn one we get much of the sideways. We kind of get understeery sideways. Oh, okay. Bumps got me. Bumps got me big time. Uh, we kept it out of the wall. Right, that is a peculiar handling. <laughs> we have understeery oversteer. That is a sentence that probably won't make a lot of sense. My TV is playing around. Thank you, TV. Um, yeah, it, it kind of, it really doesn't like turning in. Oh dear God, the brakes. <laughs> it doesn't stop either. Um, 
Yeah, there is kind of a, an awful, awful, awful lot of understeer trying to turn into a corner. And then, of course, if you go anywhere near the throttle, the back end wants to come around and say hello. Kind of wants to do the job of the front end. Uh, and then it kind of is all a little bit of a mess. Uh, no, wool, wool. We may have brushed the wool ever so slightly. It's a very long car, this one. I'm suspecting we can't be flat out through this final corner somehow. Uh, oh, careful now. Oh, we found some grip, actually up there, which I'm quite... Oh, we may break too late into turn one. Dear God, the brakes are shocking. <laughs> the brake, it just doesn't stop at all, uh, despite having raised brakes. No, nope, bump caught me again at the same place. We, we, no, no. Oh, we're going to do the same dance, and we kept it out of the wall to stop locking the brakes. There we go. <laughs> um... How have I not hit the wall yet? I don't know. Um, we've, we've somehow managed to save it twice. The bumps are nasty, as as I kind of expected they would be. We've got to be a lot more careful, I think, coming down there. I'm trying to get on the power in the same way that I do in the Ferrari, and nope, nope, you can't do that. And then we're going to... No, that's not how you take this corner forward. It's supposed to not be going quite sideways. I was trying to leave you in second to see if that would that would please you, but apparently not. Right. Second, the uh, final corner, sorry, we are... It's actually not too bad through that final turn. I mean, it's not as quick as the Ferrari, no. For <laughs> first flying lap, 52 seconds. Well, I may have been pointing sideways at one point. Okay, now let's not do the same stupid thing here. Oh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have stopped turning. Uh, let's wait, be gentle, gentle, gentle. Now we can go for it, yeah. If we can avoid, if we can avoid getting on the power over the bumps, it can actually put its power down quite well. Those big rear tyres are being really, really helpful. And then we're going to drop it over the bump there. Oh no, it actually it, it, it kept grip through that section. Now, do we leave it in first on the way up the hill? Or, well, we have to, if we do leave it in first, we'll have to be really careful on the power. Really careful. And now we can gradually increase the, uh, whoop, increase the throttle. And neatly does it through the final turn. And now I've tried to maybe boot a little too soon. Back end is wiggling. Back end is wiggling. A 54 second, uh, 45 seconds. Sorry, I do apologise. I can read. Uh, second lap. So we're some five seconds off the uh, the lap time set by the Ferrari. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure we're going to be able to beat the uh, the Ferrari's time. All right, the brakes are so shockingly bad. <laughs> I'm sure this is a quicker car in a straight line than the Ferrari. The problem is I can't actually show it down that back straight. I have to brake so early for the corner that it can't. I think it's about 140 we got the Ferrari down there. I will have a look next time around. But if this beats it, it's only ever so ever so slightly because we have to dive on the brakes immediately afterwards. Uh, how can we? How fast can we take this final turn? 90 miles an hour ish is not too shabby from the Ford. Oh, across the line, and then again, jump on the brakes super early for turn one. You have no trust in the brakes in this uh, car. But you know what? If you're careful on the throttle, especially here, that's where it's really important. If you're careful on the throttle, it's not as terrible as I was expecting. Yeah, about 140 miles an hour, and then I have to dive on the brakes. Otherwise, we're not making this corner. And there's the understeer. I was right about the understeer. There is just a mile of it. Yeah, if you're, provided you're not an utter moron, if you are very silly with the throttle, of course it is going to be incredibly sideways, as you would expect from a car with this much power. However, if you were careful with it, if you just, you know, if, if you manage your throttle control, it's really not as terrible as I was expecting it to be. Right. Turn one. Can we go quicker? Can we get into the 44? So that's going to be my goal with the other uh, country square. 44 second lap. Oh no! Careful now. See, once we've got across the bumps, I can boot it in second, and it really is not that not that unhappy with it. I was expecting it to to be wanting to spin the wheels. I think we might actually have really long gear ratios. Ah, I ran a little bit wide. Just a tad wide and bumped the wall. Uh, yeah, I was thinking how we're going to have really short gear ratios because of what the benchmark said. Maybe we have far too long a gear ratio, and that, I think, could potentially be helping us. If we have ridiculous gear ratios in this car, but ridiculously long, that could be perhaps why we aren't having so much wheel spin issues. Uh, right, we're going to come up and uh, across the line. Uh, it was a shame. that lap, Actually, the first, the first sector of that lap was really good. The second sector, I bumped the wall, and we lost it all. Okay, we are... Uh, being neater around turn one. Oh, I think they're actually better being out wide. I think there's a bigger bump on the inside there that is uh, what is causing this car some issues. Oh, under braking, I may have bumped the wall on the outside slightly. That's a curious one. No, turn forward. Please, for the love of God, turn uh, around a corner. It would just be nice if we could maybe make it around these turns. 
this didn't have as much understeer, it might not actually be that bad, in all honesty. If we could have the, the size tyres on the front that I was uh, expecting the car to have, it might not have been so terrible. We got a huge twitch coming through that final corner, though. Ah, goddammit, final lap. Final lap to try and go quicker with the, uh, with the Ford. Uh, well, at least we're not going to worry about bumping the inside wall there. We don't have the turning to get near the inside wall through that first corner. Right, that was that was better across the bumps there. I got on the power about as soon as I have the entire time. We're half a second up. Can we get it? Ah, pushed it too much on the brakes, I think. Well, we're going to keep it out of the wall at least. Uh, we're going to try and get on the power. Oh, the bigger wheel around that, uh, around that bump on the outside is not a good thing to be doing. Now we're going to have to just wait. Wait forever because the car doesn't want to turn. It really, <laughs> it has the the turning circle of a boat, I think. This one and uh, oh, we actually are doing a pretty good on lap time though. If we can get around this final turn, oh, we're going out towards the wall. No, we've done it. We've thrown it away. Just booted and hope. Ah, <laughs> god damn it! I tried. I tried to carry the speed through the final turn, and it. Failed miserably. I was six tenths of a second up, so a uh, 44, I think about 44.8 might have been what I was on for there. But I bumped a wall and then we lost it. Uh, <laughs> so we're looking at like four seconds, five seconds slower than the uh, the Ferrari around this course. Had a couple of very very big spins while getting used to the car. But if you if you treat the throttle with an awful awful lot of respect. It is surprisingly okay to drive. I wouldn't go as far as saying good. Definitely surprisingly okay is the objective for ab ab objective. Ab oh, I've got. I can't. I can't English. Don't worry about me. Um, you know what I mean uh, to describe this car. Bumps are horrible in it, but once you once you get certainly once you got out of second gear, it's absolutely fine with just booting it and it'll deal with it. A lot of understeer. An awful, awful, awful lot of understeer uh, in the car, but um, yeah, you know, it wasn't quite as terrible as I was expecting, and it was good fun having a uh, another silly car, another properly ridiculously silly car to drive around a, a circuit. Anyway, that is it for this uh, video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.